Welcome to FRC Media News for Thursday, October 19th, 2017. I'm Keith Tebow. Tonight we have information about a public utility ballot question that will go before voters this November. Details about a rally to stop planned changes to the Alfred J. Lima Corkishan River Trail that is happening this weekend. But first, let's check out the news headlines of the week. We bring in Will Richmond, the digital news editor at the Herald News. Will, how are you? I'm good, Keith. How are you doing? Doing well. Um, it seems like uh, the Froed Mayor Correa uh, brouhaha, if you will, seems to keep coming in. Something new, uh, week in and week out. And this week uh, in the Herald, you have uh, news about the upcoming legal proceedings. The city's still looking to recoup uh, rent money from Froed after it moved out of Government Center earlier this year. It looks like. Uh, the sides will be calling in some uh, heavy hitters to uh, testify in that case. Fill us in. Yeah, so for people who have been following this case or follow city politics, you're going to recognize the names that are have been listed as potential witnesses in this case. Uh, it's been listed that the attorneys for FROED plan to call former mayors uh, Sam Sutter and Will Flanagan, in addition to the current mayor, as well as um, Kathy Ann Viveris and Ken Fiola. So... Those names are all there. The city has listed the mayor as their lone potential witness. Uh, so, you know, things are moving. The, neither side is talking a whole lot about this case as the trial has now been set for December. But some core filings uh, that we acquired yesterday kind of give some direction on who is who is expected to participate. It was kind of interesting when a lot of this uh, happened uh, earlier this year with Froed moving out of Government Center. They're now in the Cherry and Webb building in uh, downtown Fall River. Um, you know, the mention of the, uh, the, the due rent, past due rent has always been there, but, um, you know, we would have thought that, you know, this may have been settled when, you know, Froed moved out, but obviously it hasn't, and uh, it'll be definitely uh, before the courts coming up, uh, uh, as you said, in, in December. So, again, something we'll just continue to follow, but it's just interesting to see that, um, you know, Froed is, is looking to, uh, get some former mayors on their side while, you know, the city will have a current mayor, Jason Correa, as well as Kathy Ann Viveris to testify on their side. It's always interesting to see in these court cases who comes up to testify on whose behalf. So that was the interesting part of, uh, of this, uh, this story this week. On another economic development front, uh, Will, the uh, city is looking to look at reusing some of the city garages um, in uh, the city near Government Center. Um, talk a little bit about that, and I guess they're really being underutilized right now, and, and there were some safety issues with some of them, correct? Right, well, the Third Street Garage remains um, unused on the top two levels. That has been shut down for a couple months now, and but as the, the redevelopment authority, is, which is the owner of the garages, is, is working, as they're trying to find out the cost for repairs, they're also developing potential plans that could uh, change that site to retail and housing uh, lo locations in the city as part of an urban downtown renewal plan and potentially moving the parking garage across the street to where the, uh, CERTA, the temporary CERTA bus terminal was uh, for a right. couple of years. Right. Um, so obviously the, uh, the redevelopment authority looking to, you know, revitalize that downtown area and looking at it for potential, um, potential housing as, as you said, and, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see if the city wants to do something with that or, or repair the garage. Uh, really not much, as you said, not much has really happened since it was reported earlier this year that those top levels of the garage are actually, uh, not safe for, for vehicles. Yeah, you know, they've remained closed, and I think that happened back in uh, April, May, that time frame. So those those floors have remained closed. I, I know that there's been engineers in there in the last about two weeks ago to conduct the test to find out what the damages are, the extent of repairs. And so there may be some progress going forward on those, but it'll be interesting to see how that fits in with this new plan that's going forward. All right, let's shift to uh, politics a little bit. As we know, the election season, we're right in the middle of the local election season, and we'll have more uh, information as we go forward, both in the Herald and here at FRC Media. But one of the uh, candidates running for school committee has made her intentions known that uh, she would like 
not to have people consider her uh, this November, Jessica Wong, who I believe finished ninth in the preliminary election, has in effect taken her name um, out of the running for school committee, although she will still appear on the ballot, correct? Correct. She's The deadline to withdraw your name officially has passed uh, quite some time ago, so she remains a candidate on the ballot, but uh, certainly if elected, she does not appear to be willing to serve. So well, that will bring the number of candidates for school committee down to 11 uh, for people to seriously consider, though I would expect she could pick up some votes along the way as well. Right. There may be some people who didn't read the story about uh, her, in effect, dropping out of the race and may still vote for her. Uh, she uh, offered she was um, offered a, a new job and uh, she decided that it looks like um, she will devote her time to that uh, to that new position with Catholic Social Services and um, we wish her all the best and she did have a pretty good showing at uh, the preliminary election so we will not see Jessica Wong uh, moving forward with the school committee race at least this year and speaking of school committee race and also the city council race one reminder and Will and the, the Herald News uh, gladly uh, taking part with us. Uh, FRC Media next week will be sponsoring candidate forums for school committee and city council. We'll be uh, having a panelist of journalists, including representatives from the uh, Forum of Herald News, as we will pr be providing these uh, com uh, forums next week. The uh, school committee forum will be Monday, October 23rd, from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., and we will be sponsoring two forums for City Council that will be held on Wednesday, October 25th. Next Wednesday, our uh, two panels will be assembled. The first panel at 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. And our second panel, 8 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Interesting to note, all of these forums will be held here at Bristol Community College. However, they will not be open to the public. These are... Uh, television events only so we invite you to watch the forums here on frc tv channel 95 also on our website frmedia.org and we'll also be streaming these forums live on our frc media facebook pages and will we welcome the herald news participation thank you for uh, loaning us a couple of uh, reporters and i believe brian fraga will be here for the school committee uh, forum and michael holston for the city council is that correct that is correct. We're excited to have a, a couple of our staff members there to ask questions and you know, we'll be following up with coverage in the paper as well. So uh, this is a great opportunity for people to hear the candidates for school committee and city council take on some of these questions. Um, you know, with the, an active mayor's race that they can go a little under the radar. So it's a, a great service that people will hopefully take advantage of. And it is difficult just because of the number of candidates. Again, we will hopefully have 11 candidates for the school committee. And again, there are 17 for the city council. The city council will be split to a panel of eight and then a panel of nine will be the second panel on the 25th. So we look forward to that. And hopefully you at home will be uh, joining us to learn more about the candidates in these races uh, beginning next week. All right, well, what's coming up at the paper over the next few days? Well, speaking of politics, we continue to uh, delve into uh, some Q&As with the candidates for city council, as well as take a step back. And we, uh, we talked to some former city councilors in the city hmm. who are no longer active in government to kind of offer some advice for, for council candidates and uh, what they should prepare for if they get elected in November. Yeah, I know a lot of this is, um, you know, a lot of people get excited about running for office. And then when they do get elected, it's a totally different animal when they have actually have to start governing. So we'll look forward to seeing that uh, coming up in the next few days. All right, well, thanks. We'll talk again soon. Have a good week. All right, you too, Keith. We'll have more FRC Media News right after this. Here are some job descriptions on the latest hot jobs list from the Fall River Career Center. Clinicians, LPNs, mentors, counselors, Child and Family Services Incorporated, located at 66 Troy Street, is looking for full-time clinicians, LPNs, mentors, and counselors, and mental health workers to work in various stabilization programs in the New Bedford and Fall River area. Job number 967-3848. Cook. 
Kindred Transitional Care in Rehab, located at 1748 Highland Avenue, is in need of a full-time cook responsible for preparing and cooking a wide variety of food for residents, customers, employees, and visitors. Job number 967-8155. Administrative Assistant, Receptionist, Library Aides, Citizens for Citizens, located at 300 Hanover Street, is looking for part-time administrative assistants, receptionists, and library aides, and kitchen help to work in various locations in the Fall River area. Job number 967-3974. Home for Aged People, located at 1168 Highland Avenue, is looking to fulfill the following part-time positions. Dietary Aid. Job number 966-9728. Nurses and CNAs. Job number 966-9721. Family Service Association, located at 101 Rock Street, is looking to fulfill the following full-time positions. Van Driver. Job number 966-6025. Family Partner. Job number 966-6021. For more information on these or other positions, visit frcmedianews.org or call the Fall River Career Center at 508-730-5000. Two questions will appear on the ballot for the Fall River City election on November 7th. When will ask voters to approve a $123 million loan order to implement the wastewater and stormwater master plan? The plan covers antiquated utility issues other than the ongoing combined sewer overflow project. With the pros and cons on this issue, here's the city's administrator of utilities, Terrence Sullivan. It's not CSO only. CSO is a part of it, but it's improvements to the wastewater treatment plant, pump stations, and flood control in the city. Now, why would somebody vote yes for this? Because uh, we've been working with the EPA to comply with the Clean Water Act. As you know, we've had a federal court order for the CSO project. In 2012, the EPA created this master plan protocol, recognizing that many communities have difficulty affording all of these improvements. The master plan allows us to prioritize projects and implement them in efforts to comply with the Clean Water Act. Approving this loan order will allow us to proceed. My worry and expectation is if the loan order is denied, that the EPA will issue an order not only forcing us to do what I'm asking for, but also tacking on additional $88 million for nitrogen removal at the wastewater treatment plant, and we will be expending far more than what we're asking the voters for now, and be facing fines and other penalties from the EPA. My expectation is I if the ballot question is voted down, I have to report back to EPA, who I've been negotiating with over the past year, tell them the ballot question has been voted down. Uh, number one, that'll put us in violation of the federal court order for CSO, automatic $250,000 fine, plus additional per diem fines. Uh, the other items within our agreement with EPA will lead to issuance of an order uh, probably to do all of these items, plus part of my negotiation is to stop or defer an additional $88 million above what we're asking for for nitrogen removal at the plant. So that's been my uh, agreement with EPA. So a no vote, I expect, will in essence result in fines and orders to do all of this work anyway, and we'll end up costing far more than what we're asking for. Much of our infrastructure is 40, 50, 70 years old. Uh, we are replacing two pump stations, which are from the 1960s and are ready to fail. If they fail, that means back up into homeowners' basements uh, on a continuous basis and violation in, of fines from EPA. We are planning $54 million in rehabilitation to the wastewater treatment plant, which is approaching 40 years old. We had a difficult summer with many odor complaints at the wastewater treatment plant. The $54 million is the first two contracts 
focused on the odor control areas in the treatment plant, so we recognize the difficulty for some of our neighbors, but you've got to remember it's 40 years old in a very corrosive environment. The staff does a good job maintaining the equipment, but just think if you ran a car seven days a week, 24 hours a day for 40 years in a corrosive environment, it's difficult to keep that piece of machinery running, and that's what we're faced with on a daily basis. Next week, FRC Media News will provide information about the pros and cons on the second ballot question that asks voters to revamp the city's home rule charter, a document that regulates how city government operates. Fall River senior citizens looking to help elementary and middle school children excel in their studies can accomplish this goal by becoming a foster grandparent. The volunteer program is sponsored by the city's anti-poverty agency, Citizens for Citizens, with more on this story, here's Program Director Judy Charess. Foster grandparents are seniors 55 and older um, who are income eligible that want to go out into the community in schools or daycares working one-on-one -on -one with children with special or exceptional needs. They are considered volunteers. It's a tax. They get a tax-free stipend. Um, for their service. It doesn't, that way, um, if they're on any kind of federally assisted programs, it doesn't affect anything like fuel, um, food stamps, housing. It's, it's a tax-free um, program for volunteers. Now, if somebody is interested in becoming a foster grandparent, what do they do? First of all, they would come to see me. Um, they need to have a quarry, um, sorry, and fingerprinted before they can begin. Um, and we try to match them in something that they would like to do, whether it be preschool or um, for kindergarten, first grade. And if transportation's a problem, we do have a van that can transport them to and from their assignments. During the day, I usually work with uh, four or five children on a round table, we call it. And we help those that are way behind on their reading or spelling. We just help them along to feel comfortable in school and know that they're loved. What made you decide to become a foster grandparent? Uh, really just to get out of the house and meet nice people, and I love children. One of the things I found that works really well with them is to praise them. When, we, when they line up in the morning, I'll go say hello, and I'll tell them have a nice day, and I'll say, are we going to be, are we going to behave today? And they'll say yes, and I say, I'm so proud of you. And I keep re reinforcing that all day, and they love it, and they give lots of hugs, and they just, they're so needy. It's, uh, it's incredible. How long have you been a foster grandparent? A uh, year and a half. Oh, so it's been a relatively short time. What's your experience been like? I love it. I love it. I love working with the children. It's been a wonderful experience. I haven't been a grandmother. This is given me the experience of working with young children and working with the young children it's given me an outlook on what it's going to be like being a grandmother it's given me the hugs that I miss not being a grandmother Wo working with the children with the math problems and the English problems it's given me a whole new outlook on working with children. Let's say someone's thinking about becoming a foster grandparent but has some reservations. How would you end those reservations? Well, my first year I was with the special needs children because I have a special need grandson, but it was way beyond my level of being able to do. But um, if you don't give it a try, you know, you have nothing to lose and absolutely everything to gain. I go five days a week. I'm happy to be there. I look forward to it. I've even had to arrange my housekeeping and my grandchildren accordingly so that I could do everything that I feel very happy doing. As a male, what kind of special attention do the kids need from a male role model? Uh, a lot of them don't have any uh, male role models in their life, so they... I try to give them somebody to look up to and somebody to give life experiences to. And so you tell some personal stories? Yes. And would you encourage other males to do this and why? Definitely. It's uh, you're helping the kids, which is the future. 
and it's so rewarding for yourself. A rally will be held this Saturday in protest of a plan by the owner of the Cloverleaf Mill to build a two-lane road across a portion of the Alfred J. Lima Quickishan River Rail Trail. The section in question is near the Brayton Avenue entrance. The proposed road will replace the trail from the mill complex out to Brayton Avenue and will force that section to be moved to nearby wetlands. Bike path proponents organized the rally, even though Mayor Jaziel Correa has told the group that he will stop the construction plan at this time with talks to resume with the mill owner sometime after November. Proponents of the bike path, which was completed in 2017, fear for the safety of pedestrians and bicyclists. A rain date for the rally will be held on October 28th. We'll have more FRC Media News right after this. Welcome to Hot Dogs and Cool Cats. Today we have Chester, the older gentleman. He is a Australian cattle dog, blue hero mix, which is what we believe he is. <clears throat> he is around nine years old, but he definitely has the energy of a puppy. Doesn't let his old age stop him from anything. He came in as a stray, so he go to a home with other dogs, kids, He's pretty well versed in anything family wise. So if you want to come down and visit Chester or any of the other shelter animals, we are Forever Paws Animal Shelter. We're located at 300 Linwood Ave. We are right at the end of the street. We're open every day 11 to 4 except for Wednesdays. Today we have three kittens. We have the white one, which is Magnolia. The striped one is Hibiscus, and Dandelion is the pretty orange one. Uh, they're pretty rambunctious, always full of energy. Uh, hibiscus over there is a very courageous one that will always be down for anything. Usually the first one to discover things, first one to play with something new. Dandelion is pretty crazy once he gets used to. Takes a little bit of time and Magnolia, the little white one, she's usually quiet and the one that can't really be bothered to move. Can't really tell from right now, but she's a pretty laid back kitten. Uh, the other two other usual kittens that want to play all the time. They just want cuddles. They want new toys. Always curious and full of energy. So if you guys are interested in any of these kittens, feel free to come down to Forever Paws Animal Rescue. Welcome back. A new basketball facility at Ruggles Park in Fall River has been dedicated to lifelong city resident Manny Papula a local basketball legend, sports scholarship donor, and athletic mentor in high school and a volunteer for high school students. Ruggles Park was packed with community members who turned out to honor Mr. Papula for his tireless efforts during his years of community involvement. This is an official citation from the City Council in recognition of the basketball court at Ruggles Park being named in your honor and all of the work that you do and the community service that you give. We thank you very, very much. Not only was he an outstanding player, he was a very humble person, which he still is. You talk about those scholarships. He's got a scholarship in my name to a boy and a girl at Derby, basketball player. And he had my picture in with the kids. So after about three years, I said, Manny, I can't do this anymore. I can't have my picture. You go in there. This is embarrassing. You're putting up the scholarship money, and I'm not. So he, he started to take that over. Okay, thank you, everybody. On behalf of Derpy High School and the Derpy High School Athletic Department, we would like to congratulate Mr. Papula on this great honor today. Mr. Papula is truly deserving of this, and we are thankful for his support for his alma mater. For over 20 years, Mr. Papula has presented a senior male and female basketball player with the Thomas Skip Karam Scholarship Award for having the highest GPA on the team for several years. His message is to reward those student athletes who excel in the classroom as well as the court. So on behalf of the Durfee High School Athletic Department, we would like to present Mr. Papula with this basketball jersey and once again thank him for all his support. Ruggles Park gave me so much. I promised, okay, that's what I knew I wanted to say. I vowed that until my health stops me from being able to do so, 
I will continue to do the, you put up these basketball nets, okay, it's usually uh, about four or five times a year during the warmer weather, okay, uh, from April to October, and uh, so I do it about four or five times a year, and I want to continue until I just physically no longer can do so, and even after then, I still will not feel as if I've adequately paid Ruggles Park back for everything that Ruggles Park gave to me. So I, I thank the park department, and I thank those people who hired Frederick Olmsted to design this park and put it right here in this neighborhood, uh, because they certainly improved my life an incredible amount. That'll do it for this edition of FRC Media News. Again, a reminder, check out our school committee and city council forums next week. Our school committee forum will be from 6 to 7.30 p.m. on Monday, October 23rd, and we'll have two panels for city council forums on Wednesday, October 25th, the first one at 6 p.m. and the second panel at 8 p.m. You can check out FRC Media News Thursday and Friday at 6 p.m. and online 24-7 at frcmedianews.org. For all of us here at FRC Media News, I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Thursday.